With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast. Hour 2. Ladies and gentlemen of America, welcome. I hope you're doing great. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I hope you got blue skies wherever you are. I do, but it's hot, and I'm supposed to go play golf this afternoon. I was supposed to go yesterday, but we moved it to today because it's supposed to be cooler, and I don't know that it's going to be, and I'm going to suck anyway, but that's all right. Uh, it'll be fun, allegedly. I have good cigars, if nothing else. Okay. We got to talk about the NBC poll. A lot of buzz about the NBC poll. Any idea what the most popular biggest issue is for voters in America? Not just Republicans, but everybody. Do you have any idea? Number one, according to the NBC News poll, is this. 55% of people are more likely to support a candidate who, quote, supports deploying the U.S. military to the Mexican border to stop illegal drugs from entering the country. Number two, 46% of people are more likely to support deploying the U.S. military, to the Mexican border to deal with immigration. Friends, I have talked about this issue before. And I want to talk about it again. But I want to, I want to, we, we talk about fentanyl and the like. But I, I want to talk about it from a different angle here because this is the angle that is most dismissed by the media. And it's an angle on which we need to meditate. On May 4th, 2023, in Fulton County, Georgia, Tony Turner, age 27, of Atlanta, Georgia, pleaded guilty to one count of pandering of a person under the age of 18. He was sentenced to 10 years with three years to be served in prison, the remaining on strict probation and required to register as a sex offender. On May 19th, 2023, Carrie Barnett, 27, of Riverdale, Georgia, pleaded guilty to one count of pandering of a person under the age of 18, was sentenced to 10 years. On June 2nd, 2023, M Mintaka Bay, 39, of Atlanta, Georgia, pleaded guilty to one count of pandering of a person under the age of 18, was sentenced to 10 years. On June 8th, 2023, Stephen Stone, 31, of Lithonia, Georgia, pleaded guilty to three counts of trafficking of persons for sexual servitude, was sentenced to 25 years. Undra Henderson, age 30, of Atlanta, Georgia, on the same day, pleaded guilty to one count of pandering of a person under the age of 18, was sentenced to 10 years. On June 12, 2023, Alif Morgan, age 40, of Atlanta, Georgia, pleaded guilty to one count of pandering of a person under the age of 18, was sentenced to 10 years. Daniel Calloway, 41, of Stone Mountain, Georgia, pleaded guilty to one count of pandering of a person under the age of 18, sentenced uh, under the First Defender Act to 10 years. Warren Watts, 31, of Covington, Georgia, pleaded guilty to one count of pandering of a person under the age of 18, was sentenced under the First Offender Act to 10 years. The case was prosecuted by Assistant Attorney General Caitlin Fain Salinas of the Human Trafficking Prosecution Unit. 
following the recovery of a 17-year-old female victim. Individuals had engaged her in sexual trafficking. Shane Bean, age 39, of Lithonia, Georgia, entered a non-negotiated plea to pandering of a person under the age of 18. These were all part of Operation Not Forgotten, a two-week effort to rescue endangered missing children in Atlanta and Macon, Georgia. Resulted in the rescue of 26 children, the safe location of 13 children, and the arrest of nine criminal associates. We don't talk enough about human trafficking. There's a story today I want to read you the email. My reaction to this, and I want you to know my reaction to this, is not to light the principal on fire here. I don't think the principal or the assistant principal is the bad guy here, and some are attacking the assistant principal, but this is Mount Pleasant High School in Rhode Island. The email was obtained under a Freedom of Information Act request. I want you to listen to this heartbreaking story. We have, this is from the assistant principal to the teachers at the school. The subject is urgent contribution. We have a student who came to America with a coyote. When they come illegally, they usually give them a time frame to make a payment of $5,000 to those who bring them illegally. Our student has been working extra hours to pay them and to support his family in Guatemala. Not ignoring that this kid lives here by himself and has no support from anyone. He only owes $2,000 out of the $5,000 But if he does not pay by February 1st, they will kill his family in his country. He works so hard and does not sleep trying to get that money together, but he is so stressed out. We want to reach out to everyone to ask for help. If we can get people to donate whatever you guys can to help him out with this debt, that will be great. He comes late sometime because he works until late, but we don't want him to drop out of school. We want to support him with anything that we can. This was from January. Y'all, this this assistant principal is not the bad guy here. This is in Providence, Rhode Island, and this is the assistant principal is not the bad guy here. And I, I, I want you to understand the picture and at least... We can all say this is bad. We can say human trafficking is horrible. We can say that we need to secure the border. But at least let me paint the picture for you. Here is a teenager who has made his way from Guatemala to Rhode Island illegally by hiring a coyote to get him across the American border. He's put himself in public school in Rhode Island to get an education and concurrently is working all hours of the day and night to avoid having his family murdered. The the, the assistant principal is not the bad guy here. The assistant principal was trying to help. Yes, she's a progressive. Listen, her Twitter profile apparently, queer activist who will dismantle the school to prison pipeline, puts her pronouns, all that progressive. But y'all, she's trying to help a high school student avoid having his parents murdered. 
And I don't think conservatives should make that the issue. I think conservatives should make the issue, how are we allowing this to happen as a society where a kid can be smuggled into this country by a coyote, make his way to Rhode Island, enrolls himself in public school to get an education while also working a bunch of jobs, according to this email, does not have a support group and a family there, I guess is living on his own. God knows what the details are. How can this kid get across the border hiring coyotes? It's the disincentive in the system that we've got to deal with. And now let's expand it beyond human trafficking, beyond the components of sex trafficking of kids in this country to the fentanyl issue. They're smuggling drugs into this country. They're smuggling people into this country. They have defined us by our vices, and so many of us are having at it. This kid, I don't I don't know how old the kid is, but he's in high school, can't be older than 18. Is trying to go to school and get an education while also trying to keep his family from being murdered. This is just unreal. And it's allowed to happen because we have failed to secure our border to stop like this from happening. The kid would have been disincentivized from even coming here had Joe Biden done his job and the presidents before him. And don't give me the Donald Trump built the wall because the wall clearly wasn't built well for this kid to get here. And the Democrats stopped him, and he said Mexico was going to pay for it. It wasn't true. This isn't an issue specifically about Trump or Biden or anyone else. This is a bipartisan problem over time with an unsecured border, and the American people, Democrat, Republican, independent, moderate, it doesn't matter. They want the border secured, and no one in Washington, particularly, and this is the partisan issue, particularly on the Democratic side of things, they don't want to secure the border. How many more American kids must die of fentanyl overdoses before they're willing? How many more kids come to this country alone without their family until we secure the border? How many more human trafficking victims will there be? Y'all, my dear friend Chip Roy, he is a good friend of mine. He was in Texas, and he's telling me about the story. He was at the border, and the Border Patrol pulled over a vehicle. And the vehicle had multiple people in the back of the vehicle who were being smuggled into the country. The vehicle was being driven by an American citizen, white, who was being paid by the drug cartel. These people thought they were coming to this country to go work in houses and do yard work and clean, and they were being sold into sex slavery. They had no idea the hell they were about to be put in. Thankfully, they were caught by the Border Patrol, rescued by the Border Patrol. Not just girls either. We're a profoundly great country. But a great country needs to secure its borders, not just for us, but for these victims. And we're not doing it. It is the number one issue in the polling, according to NBC News, on a bipartisan, nonpartisan basis. Americans want the border secured. Why the hell is Joe Biden and the Democrats, why are they dragging their feet on securing the border? Build the wall Secure the border, save the lives. It really is that straightforward. Have you ever wished you could become an even more effective conservative advocate? Like, uh, who could you rely on to give you the knowledge and information you need to make more persuasive arguments, how to knock on doors, how to show up at your local city council, or to meet your state legislator to advocate for small government? Americans for Prosperity can help you. They train you to be a better conservative activist, to grow the movement and fight for small government around the country from the local level to the federal level. And they put points on the board. Over 200 legislative victories in the past year alone, 
advocating for smaller government and reduced regulation. Americans for Prosperity wants you on their team. You can join them at americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. They've got over 30 chapters around the country in states. They're growing new ones all the time. Be a part of a movement for small government with americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. Go check them out today. Um, uh, y'all want to laugh at my expense? (laughs) Oh my gosh. So I got an email from a lady at my seminary asking if I would meet with uh, the, the director of development for Reform Theological. And I replied instead of I'd love to, I'd love you. My assistant is on vacation in the Dominican Republic, and she just texted me and says, I'm gone 24 hours, and you're loving after another woman. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I did that. Oh, gosh. So so I had to write the woman back and say, "Uh, my assistant's on vacation. It wasn't here to proofread my email. It should have been, I'd love to, not I'd love you. (laughs) Gosh. Happens to the best of us, happens to the best, or the worst of us, whichever. To the folds, let me save myself. Daniel, you're up next. Welcome. Hey, Eric. <laughs> I uh, I about spit out some water out my nose earlier when you were talking. Uh, you were playing that audio clip about. <laughs> yeah. The church. By the way, church it's, called the, it's called the Sparkle Creed. Yeah, you know, I baptized myself with uh, the uh, cool Coke full-on coke, but uh, it's ridiculous. I pulled up to a, and, and, you know, your thoughts about this, of course, I call it the double standards. I pull up to a church, uh, pull into a church parking lot to, uh, to take a break from door knocking, and I see pride flags among the side of the church. And, you know, someone comes out, and I said, well, let me ask you, I was like, I'm actually reading my Bible. I was like, how can what you believe and what you uh, preach be different from what I believe and preach uh, uh, as a conservative? I said, my Bible is not going to just magically change when it walks through the doors of your church if I were to do that. And she's like, well, we deserve the right to receive your answer, and we... May believe in the same God, but we have two different opinions. He goes, um, like people, everybody's got an opinion, like they do a rear end. I'm like, well, yeah. you know, we're we're at this weird, weird point in in society, particularly where where everybody gets to to interpret everything the way they want to interpret it, and who cares about orthodoxy and thousands of years of similar interpretation? It, it's it's become whatever makes you feel good and redact what you want. This is going to be an issue. I will say it's notable. There was a report the other day on on the most rapidly dying off congregations in America, and uh, they're, they're all the mainline congregations that have left behind orthodoxy, and that should tell people something, but I don't think it will. I don't think it will. Now, I want to tell you about Vision Computers because, my goodness, their customer service is hands down – the best you will encounter when it comes to tech support for your computer. You can call them. They actually answer the phone. They don't go through the whole press one, plus three, press five, habla espanol. Um, They just answer the phone. And if they can't get you immediately, they will call you back. Um, They're fantastic. See it for yourself. Get a computer from Vision Computers. You can even pay them. If you didn't get a computer from Vision, you can pay them a small annual fee, and they will become your tech support for your home, for your business, whatever you need visioncomputers.com visioncomputers.com is their website you can also call them anywhere in the nation they will help you they'll custom build a computer for you they'll be your tech support for you call them at 404 compute 404 compute ask them about the eric erickson special it's not even on their website you can get a great deal use my name 404 compute or visioncomputers.com let them build your computers for you at a reasonable price and be your tech support for you or your business greetings conversationalists i am delighted to have you with me the phone number is 877-973-7425 
Uh, before I move to the next topic, the one I'm approaching with trepidation, I do want to take Lewis's call. Lewis, welcome to the show. Hey, Eric. Um, talk about the engagement with the border. I've listened to some podcasts as some special forces, and there was a couple of guys on there that say that, that the U.S. would engage, and no doubt we would win, but they know that the drug cartel would engage back. And they said that uh, it would have to be a full commitment to distinguish all of it. Um, there was a couple of guys that went to work for the Border Patrol that came back uh, as, a, as a job, and they said that and there's places in there on the border where those coyotes hang out on our side in those canyons with families. Yeah. And uh, one thing he was saying is just trying to accountability of it's, it would be a loss of life, but you would have to engage him so fully that it, it would be a, a major bloodbath. Yeah, it, it is not a good situation down there. And, and I have heard from Border Patrol agents that they've been shot at uh, by these guys. And oftentimes what happens is the the coyotes cause a disturbance uh, now, now, follow along with me here. What they do is they cause a disturbance. They're sending the human trafficking people across. The, the, the people who have paid the coyotes, they're being sent across. And the coyotes then cause a disturbance there. So the Border Patrol agents rush to stop the people crossing, and then the coyotes, in a different direction, send the fentanyl runners off who many times will then shoot off fireworks so that both the Border Patrol and the coyotes know they made it safely into the United States uh, and were not captured. They use the people paying them as bait so that they can actually run the fentanyl. They get more money for that than they do for the people. It's a big issue. Now, I I, got to talk about another issue, and this is a sensitive subject for a lot of people. I want to be delicate here, but it is a sensitive subject for some. I... At one point in my life, thought that uh, Trump supporters tend to be extremely sensitive. Uh, you cannot abide criticism of their guy. I'm learning it's not just them. There are others as well. The DeSantis supporters sometimes are a little bit uh, uh, fear and trepidation when it comes to criticism as well. Probably those two more than anyone else. But I got to talk about this issue. Because poll after poll after poll after poll, the state levels, New Hampshire, in Iowa, in South Carolina, uh, in the national polling, the NBC poll, the ABC poll, the Fox News poll, the CNN poll, they all show that Donald Trump is cruising towards the Republican nomination. All of them do. If the election were held tomorrow, Donald Trump would be the Republican nominee. What they also show is profound weakness for Donald Trump in the general election. And outside of Trump supporters, uh, there is a growing concern articulated by Kevin McCarthy, who did walk it back under bullying pressure and others, that uh, Trump could get the nomination and cost us the general election because he's so weak in the polling. But what of the DeSantis team right now? I I got a call yesterday from a reporter. Y'all would all know the reporter. I'm I'm not going to name names. Uh, you you would call, he was doing a gut check, and he says, listen, my gut, my, my head tells me that there's movement, there's money on the sidelines, people can do stuff, but my gut tells me that Donald Trump's going to be the nominee. What, what are you hearing? What are you, what are you saying? No, no. I will tell you all exactly what I, I told the reporter. There are hundreds of millions of dollars waiting on the sidelines that has not engaged yet. There is a private belief among the Republicans that Donald Trump is going to be indicted in Georgia and possibly indicted in Washington, D.C. We actually did not see a rally round Donald Trump effect with the federal indictment. In fact, his polling trend line dipped. And there's this belief of the Republicans, these external events will take Donald Trump out. Why engage him? Here's the problem, though. What if they don't? Liz Cheney says Democrats are playing with fire, assuming they can beat Donald Trump in 2024. And they are, by the way. Donald Trump could win in 2024. 
people are worried about Joe Biden's mental and physical capacity. They hate Donald Trump more. But what if something happens to Biden? What if he dies and Kamala Harris becomes the Democratic nominee? She's the most hated politician in America today. Donald Trump would kick her butt. This is Cheney. It's really important for Democrats to take him seriously. You know, there can be a tendency I see sometimes for people on the Democratic side to say, well, look, sure, you know, the Republicans will nominate him. The Republicans are a mess, but but we'll be able to beat him in a general. And um, that is playing with fire, and it's a, it's a risk we can't take. So I think it's really important for everyone to look at the threat that he poses apart from, from party ideology and, and realize it's something that we have to take very seriously and we've got to stand against. Now, regardless of your views on Cheney, regardless of your views on Trump, let, let me just break this down for you. I, I try to be as, as open with my views and also recognizing I can be wrong as I can. I do think Donald Trump would be a weaker Republican candidate than the others, but I also think Donald Trump is on the path to become the Republican nominee. And Liz Cheney, whether you like her or not, is trying to tell Democrats you've got to take him seriously as a candidate. You can't just say he's going to lose. If Kamala Harris becomes the nominee, he's going to win. If the economy really does tank into recession, he's probably going to win, and the Democrats will get what they deserve. But the Republican nomination, the voting doesn't even start happening until around February of next year. And people are already like, well, he's won. It's toast. This reporter yesterday is like, my gut says it's over. This becomes, and, and this is what I need you to understand. If you are a Republican who doesn't want Donald Trump to be the nominee, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. When everybody starts thinking it's over, it's done, it's going to be him. Nobody's shaking the game up. And if you want brutal honesty from me, nobody is laying a hand on Donald Trump from the GOP. You've got 11 other Republican candidates who refuse to engage him. The, the DeSantis team does on social media, but nowhere else. And most Americans are not on social media. The DeSantis campaign right now just strikes me as being hyper online, and, and, and they can't be. And also, there's a message to be had out there. You know, I mentioned the number one issue for all voters right now is the border, and DeSantis has been talking about that. But you know what the sleeper issue is? The issue that transcends the border issue, the issue that connects to all Americans, the cost of living. DeSantis seems to be in fight mode for the Trump voters, and nobody knows what his economic message is. And there's actually a way to tie the culture into the cost of living, because so much of the cost of living comes from democratic, social, and progressive policies. You can blend the two together. And frankly, I think a lot of voters don't want to hear what Ron DeSantis did in Florida. They want to hear what Ron DeSantis is going to do in Washington, D.C. And I think if the DeSantis team, which right now all of the headlines are he's sinking, he's trending down, he's not picking up ground, we thought he was the guy, look at this money— He's got to begin to start turning this narrative around because perceptions are starting to get locked, and there is still time for him to do it. But also there's time for other candidates too. One of the things that stands out in my mind is just how recently the buzz about Tim Scott has started growing from people who wanted the angry fighter that are now suddenly like, I kind of like this guy. He's kind of positive. The Democrats sure hate him. He sure hacked off Barack Obama. I kind of like that he hacked off Barack Obama. And he's got this upbeat, positive American success story to tell people. And it's resonating. I wonder if Nikki Haley got in too early. She's not generating a lot of buzz. Now, a lot of this is sitting back and, and hoping DeSantis and Trump slog each other and, and burn out. But I got to tell you, I, I look at the polling out there right now, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're a Trump supporter, you got to be sitting pretty and somewhat smugly right now, knowing that if the election are he is held tomorrow, Trump is going to be the Republican nominee. Forget winning the general. You look at the same polls that show you he loses the general, they show you he's winning the primary. I don't think you can take half of the poll here. You got to take the half that says he's winning the primary, but you got to couple it with the half that says he's losing the general, and you got to find a way around that. That is just a true reality. But the reality is Trump's unstoppable right now. In Iowa, Trump's up 22 points. In New Hampshire, he's up 30 points. In South Carolina, he's up 21 points. In Nevada, he's up 31 points. Now, that's just one poll and not from a great pollster, but it's pretty consistent polling across the board. 
DeSantis right now seems to be the only one. Let me give you, this is the um, early state polling averages. It's Trump um, 52, DeSantis 20 in uh, Nevada. It's Trump 40, DeSantis 19 in South Carolina. It's Trump 44, DeSantis 22 in Iowa. It's Trump 46, DeSantis 15 in New Hampshire. DeSantis is the only one in double digits with Trump, except in South Carolina, you got Nikki Haley and Tim Scott, both at 10%, killing each other. There's 20% there for Haley and Scott combined. DeSantis is at 20%. Trump is at 40.8%. But these Republicans got to figure out a way to get forward. And I would suggest to the Republican candidates, particularly the DeSantis team, we know you're the culture warrior now. We get it. We know you picked the fight with Florida. We get it. We know you're willing to fight on the border. We get it. What have you done for me lately? That is the question voters want answered. They know you're going to protect parents from the wokes, and they know you're going to secure the border. What about your economic vision? Where is your happy warrior message? These guys and gals on the GOP are standing in the shadow of Donald Trump. And I think all of them kind of internally think, The moment one of us steps out from his shadow, we're the one who's going to get burned and we don't want to go first. Somebody's got to go first or none of them will go at all. The polling becomes self-fulfilling. Not yet, but after Labor Day, it starts to lock in. Now there's going to be a debate, but Donald Trump's not going to be on the debate stage. And these guys are going to go after each other. They can't help but go after each other. The, The debate moderator is going to force them to take issue with each other, not with Trump. So how do they do that? They've got to start figuring this out. There's got to begin to be a pivot, particularly, I think, with the DeSantis team, because everything now is iterative and duplicative of everything that came before, and it hasn't worked to draw people to him. There's got to be an economic vision. There's got to be this upbeat, positive vision of a future of America if you elect him president, not just I'm going to fight like Trump, not just I'm going to take on the wokes, not just I'm going to take on the border. What's your vision to improve Americans' lot in life? People are concerned about the cost of living. There is a great way to tie it to the culture. There is a great way to tie those two together. The Democrats' cultural socioeconomic policies have raised people's costs of living. They have raised inflation. They have hurt salaries. They have hurt jobs. They have driven away small businessmen, and they have encouraged a lot of people to sit out of a jobs market and just live on the government dime. There's a way for him to make this message and tie culture and economics together. But my gut tells me that... When story after story after story keeps coming that DeSantis isn't making a din in Trump and maybe DeSantis isn't the guy at some point, whether the DeSantis team likes it or not, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I can tell you behind the scenes, a lot of his major supporters who I see are beginning to behind the scenes start to privately grumble. There's only a matter of time before that becomes public. And what he needs to do, if he wants to win this thing, is he needs to give them some signal. And my suggestion is there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. Get through July 1st. Get through July 1st, release a big total of money, and begin to make that pivot. Use that money. Tim Scott is starting to get traction with a happy warrior message. And the DeSantis people are like, well, he's still in single digits. Yes, but he's trending up. He's the only one who is. There are paths forward for all of these candidates. There are paths forward. But you got to distinguish yourself and not just try to be iterative of Donald Trump to be able to win the nomination against Trump. Because otherwise, Trump's going to get it. And I will tell you, I do believe in the polling that shows if the election were held tomorrow, Donald Trump would be the nominee. But I also believe the rest of the poll, too, that he's the one who has the most difficult time against Biden. And I would really like to beat Joe Biden because Clarence Thomas isn't getting any younger one of the groups that's helping conservatives, regardless of where you stand on internal party politics, they're helping conservatives advance their agenda, is Patriot Mobile. They take a portion of their profits and they fund the Second Amendment. They fund the pro-life cause. They fund good parents battling wokes on school boards, and they've been very successful at it. So successful, the left hates them. 
you should do business with them. All you have to do is take your cell phone number to them, or you can get a brand new phone number from them. You go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. You set up shop with Patriot Mobile, you get guaranteed great service. They use the same cell towers you're already probably using, and then you help the conservative causes you care about. That's Patriot Mobile's genius. They were set up specifically to do this. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. Or you can call them, 972-PATRIOT. You get guaranteed great service. Tell them I sent you. If you call them at 972-PATRIOT, tell them I sent you. There's no way to track otherwise. You get free activation with my name. Or to make it really easy, PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. Get a new phone number from them or take your existing phone number to them. They make it easy for you. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. To the phones we go. Craig, you're up next. Welcome. Um, Hey, Eric. Um, Thank you. I was wondering, now every state has laws for early voting, uh, vote by mail. Some of them have uh, ballot ballot harvesting. And the Trump campaign is obviously signaled they're resistant to all these types of things, while DeSantis is open to playing the game that we're in. I mean, I wish it was the 80s, too, and it was all on one day, but it's not. And I'm wondering throughout the primary if these competing philosophies when it comes to getting out the vote might play a big difference with DeSantis doing the ballot harvesting states he can, uh, encouraging, you know, early voting, vote by mail instead of relying on just the show up on election day. You know, listen, yeah, this is one of the things I, I hear regularly from uh, folks, particularly on the DeSantis side, they think will make a difference. But the exception is the Iowa caucus, because the Iowa caucus, you've got to show up and be in the room. And I was actually talking to this reporter yesterday who said that the thing that uh, people worry about is is the, the Trump caucusers tend to be more aggressive and in your face, and that may push people in Trump's direction. Uh, but yes, ballot harvesting, absentee voting, early voting, the DeSantis team has this massive ground operation, and they're going to try to get people to turn out on the ground operation uh, to, to exceed. But here's the thing. In primaries, people vote for who they're really motivated to vote for, and there's real motivation for Trump supporters to go vote for him. They love the guy, and you got to be able to overcome that in a race that right now is kind of frozen in Trump's favor. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.